Good evening and thanks for joining us for the News at 10. I'm Neil Aber. And I'm Karina Corral. Well, it has been nearly two decades after the 9-11 attacks in New York City and America is still reeling from the loss of thousands of lives on a somber September day. And here is a live look of New York City and the 9-11 tribute in lights. Two blue beams shine where the Twin Towers once stood. U.S. leaders today reflect on the moment that changed our nation and the world forever. Whitney Wilde takes a look back at the events of 9-11 and how America remembers. You were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. 19 years ago, a country in shock stood still. There are no words. September 11th, 2001 took a catastrophic turn at 8.46 a.m. when a plane crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. When a second plane hit the South Tower just more than 15 minutes later, it became clear an attack was underway. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil despicable acts of terror. As horror unfolded, first responders rushed to help, not knowing they could be headed to their deaths. Today, their legacy of selflessness lives on. It's most importantly about never forgetting that people came together in a time of crisis in a way we've never seen in our lifetime as Americans. Another plane slammed into the Pentagon. Fourth plane destined for the U.S. Capitol crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Nearly 3,000 people died. 19 years ago on this day, at this very hour on this field, 40 brave men and women triumphed over terror and gave their lives in defense of our nation. Friday, leaders and citizens nationwide are taking time to reflect on lives lost and unity found. We were united by our conviction that America was the world's most exceptional country blessed with the most incredible heroes. I'm Whitney Wild reporting. Several Central Coast agencies held special events to recognize the somber day. Some events were modified for COVID-19. Others were canceled. The annual Day of Remembrance Ceremony at Fire Station 1 in San Luis Obispo did not happen, but there were Flowers stacked up for people to place on a metal beam from the World Trade Center. One person from Massachusetts bought a, brought a picture of one of the pilots who crashed into the first World Trade Center. With today and everything that's going on in the world, if we can just find compassion and love, just like you know when 9-11 happened, we didn't care about color, race, what sex, who we loved. And we just need to come together without uh, separation because we're all equal. The Lompoc Fire Department also held a ceremony at its main headquarters this morning. About a dozen people showed up at Fire Station 5 in Santa Maria to come together and remember 9-11. The group remembered the people whose lives were lost. The fire department then put the flag at half staff and sounded the fire horns as tribute. People talked about where they were on that fateful day. I believe it's even more important these times right now as a, as a country to stand together in solidarity. Um, it's, a, it's a day we always need to remember and never forget. We lost a lot of public safety members, lost a lot of citizens. It's a day that will live in infamy and we need to always remember that. Uh, especially during this pandemic, like I said, it's, uh, it's a time to stand together and remember. People talked about how united the country was the next day and compared that to how divided the country is now. Firefighters expressed that people should treat each other kindly and with respect. Because so many people were hurt, so many people were killed, and it was a major attack on our country. And we need to make sure that we do everything possible to ensure that we have a strong, national defense and that we do everything possible through diplomacy and our Department of Defense to ensure that that never happens again. We spoke with Representative Salud Carbajal who says it was powerful to see people coming together to help one another in a time of need. A group gathered at Blast 825 Brewery in Orchid to honor those lost and injured in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. All 
Retired Santa Maria firefighter Dennis Shapinski said this has become an annual tradition. The brewery has continued the tradition of the previous owner and has accommodated this group to honor the fallen. Shapinski says he went to work at a station during 9-11 and it's been close to him ever since. We all consider ourselves brothers and sisters in the fire service and losing so many in one day was uh, just unfathomable and that we uh, want to keep them in our thoughts and as everyone else said the day after it happened we'll never forget. The American Legion Post 534 in Orchid opened for the first time since March today to host a barbecue. Members say they want local veterans to know the post is open and there to support them and the community. And if you missed today's event, they'll be hosting another barbecue tomorrow from 1 to 8 p.m. at the American Legion on West Clark Avenue in Old Orchid. Tri-tip sandwiches and chips will be sold for $10. All seating will be outdoors. And now to the latest, a big announcement for California college students. The CSU Chancellor's Office released new guidelines regarding virtual learning for winter classes beginning in January. KSBY News reporter Cindy Brandt has a decision and reaction from the Cal Poly community. Stepping back on campus is something students look forward to this year more than ever, but a CSU decision this week means students will have to wait even longer to be back in person. What would have been week of welcome, now an empty campus with students few and far between. It feels a lot emptier because a lot of people did decide not to return to campus. Some moving back in despite virtual learning, which is not going away anytime soon. Lengthy guidelines from the CSU mark the decision to continue with a primarily virtual learning approach for the academic term beginning in January of next year. A disappointment for students now glued to their phones. Obviously, I was hopeful we'd be back in person. The decision comes months in advance of winter quarter, just days before a virtual fall quarter kicks off. The chancellor says it's to allow for academic planning and needed authorization for online course offerings. I hope I'm wrong, but we have to be prepared for this to be a long-term situation. Mustang parents shared their frustration to the CSU's decision. I was not surprised that they went are going virtual for the next quarter. I think they're going to be virtual for the whole year. Kevin Wong says having his son on campus was all he could do for a taste of the college life. So for me, it was worth the thousands of dollars to pay for the dorms to let him live on campus this year. The university says students with housing contracts and 100% virtual class will be allowed to defer housing until spring quarter. But for now, it's masks and Wi-Fi for the foreseeable future. While Cal Poly is unique in that it is the only CSU campus on the quarter system, a spokesperson from the university tells me that plans for spring quarter will be along the same lines as fall and winter. Reporting in San Luis Obispo, Sydney Brandt, KSBY News. Cal Poly students will be starting classes on Monday with only 13% of sections held in person. San Luis Obispo County reported 28 new cases of COVID-19 today. The total now stands at more than 3,200 cases. Eight people are hospitalized. Three are in the ICU. 210 people are recovering at home and nearly 3,000 have recovered. 23 people have died. Tests are currently available to the public in Arroyo Grande, San Luis Obispo and Morro Bay. Santa Barbara County health officials are reporting two new deaths. That brings the total amount of deaths to 105. Health officials are also reporting 30 new cases, bringing the total number to over 8,600. 38 people are hospitalized, 12 are in the ICU, over 8,300 have recovered. In a developing story now, people across California and now the Central Coast are being flooded with unsolicited letters from the Employment Development Department. Joanne Green is one of the many California residents receiving multiple EDD unemployment benefit letters in the mail. Some even contain debit cards with other people's names on them. I uh, looked at the address, it was the right address, and then I looked at the name. And I didn't recognize the name, so I you know, looked in the phone book to see if maybe it was a neighbor or something. The EDD announced Thursday it's working with law enforcement to investigate possible fraud. If you have received letters from the EDD addressed to someone else, the best thing to do is to return to sender and contact the agency fraud line. We have that information listed on our website, ksby.com. 
Paso People's Action hosted a Black Lives Matter chalk and talk event in downtown Paso Robles today. The co-founder of Paso Robles Action says this event was an opportunity for the community to come together and have an opportunity to have a dialogue. Community members were able to draw on the sidewalks with various messages such as no justice, no peace. The group also served root beer floats during the event, which the co-founder says is meant to symbolize unity. I hope that they see my messages and, and get the point of Black Lives Matter. Chalk and Talk happens every second Friday of the month from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m.